Ma'am, please make a video on Coleridge. Ma'am, I cannot understand rhyme of ancient mariner. Ma'am, what is imagination and fancy? Ma'am, please make a video on Coleridge. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Arpata Karva and I was just going through the comment section of my YouTube videos. And guess what I found? I found that almost everybody has requested me to make a video on Coleridge. So fine then, let's make the most requested video today. In this video, I shall be talking about Coleridge's life, about his most famous works, and I'll also be looking at Coleridge as a critic. So let's start. So Coleridge was a star since beginning. Like he started reading at the age of three and by the age of five he has completed reading bible and arabian nights he was also uh, quite influenced by the other writers who were living in his period specifically he met charles lamb when he visited london and he met him in a school charity school and charles lamb was so inspired by this meeting that he wrote an essay talking about his meeting with coleridge and the essay is titled as Christ Hospital five and thirty years ago. Then he also met Robert Saudi, who is another fellow romantic poet and with whom he started to build a utopian society for which he named Pantisocracy. So this was the utopian society which Saudi and Coleridge wanted to build, but then the venture was not successful. People did not come and live there. So it was a failure. But then Coleridge did not lose hope. He then befriended William Wordsworth, which whom he started to write his first poetries and the collection of poetry was published as Lyrical Ballads. And Lyrical Ballads is the first romantic poetry collection which marks the beginning of the era of romanticism. Very few people know that Coleridge has also started a paper which is called Friend and this paper was devoted to truth and liberty. Apart from that, if you look at the life of Coleridge, it was not always a bed of roses because he suffered from various diseases and he took opium as a painkiller so that uh, it can help him to feel the pain less and that is how he became an opium addict. Apart from that, he also suffered from bipolar disorder. So his mood swings were very the Coleridge. Ke. Apart from all these things, even after so many challenges, so many difficulties in his life, Coleridge wrote some of the most amazing poems. And that is the reason why he is regarded as Sage of Highgate. This was a question in September 2013 when they asked that who is called Sage of Highgate. And it is Samuel Taylor Coleridge who is regarded as the Sage of Highgate. Highgate is a place where he lived and that is why he's called Sage of Highgate. Coleridge has written a lot of poems like Christabel, Frost at Midnight and the most important one is Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner is a poem which is celebrated as a literary classic and there's this beautiful line in the poem that water water everywhere and all the ships did sink water water everywhere and nor any drop to drink. This is a beautiful line where he kind of tells us that in spite of having so much water around, the people on the ship, they were dying of thirst. So that is the ironical thing which is there in the poem. And this poem was particularly inspired by James Cook's second voyage of exploration. What we don't know about this poem is that the poem is divided in seven parts. This was asked in June 2013. And when I read this question for the first time, I was amazed because Almost every time I uh, read this poem, I tend to look at certain important factors, but never did it occur to me to check out how many parts is this poem in. So do remember this uh, particular thing about the poem that the poem is divided in seven parts. Apart from that, Coleridge has written a lot of other poems like Kubla Khan and then Christabel. These two poems are in fragment and uh, Kubla Khan especially, it was inspired from an opium dream that he had. I cover all these poems in detail in my online audio course. So if you are really willing to prepare for UGC Net English, then you can go to my website and check the list of writers I 
uh, use in order to complete the syllabus of UGC Net English. So you can find the details on my website about my course. We are providing online mock test series as well with the course. So you can join the mock test as well as you can join the course so that you can prepare in a full-fledged manner for UGC Net English. We all know Coleridge as a poet but very few of us are aware of the fact that Coleridge has also written a play. The play's name is Osorio. Osorio is a play which was written by Coleridge. Actually it was originally written in 1797 and later he changed the title and he published it again after 16 years and the new title was Remorse. So now the play that we know is Remorse. The original play was Osorio and the title was later changed by Coleridge himself. The play talks about this man Osorio who is led by temptation and in the process of that path, following that path of temptation, he commits a lot of sins. We all know that Coleridge and Wordsworth together published the great book of poetry collection that was called Lyrical Ballads and in this Lyrical Ballads, Coleridge specifically contributed four poems, namely Rhyme of Ancient Mariner, the second one was Foster Mother's Tale, the third was Dungeon and the fourth was Nightingale. Apart from the poetry, Lyrical Ballad also contains a preface in which Wordsworth describes his theory of poetry, saying that poetry is spontaneous overflow of emotion recollected in tranquility. And when you look at the essays of Coleridge and when you look at the letters of Coleridge, you will find that Coleridge has claimed his share in the theories of Lyrical Ballad, saying that these theories are half the child of my brain. So Coleridge said for the lyrical ballad theories that it is a mutual theory uh, written both by Wordsworth and Coleridge. But later in his life we find that he criticized the same poetical views of Wordsworth in his own collection of essays which is called Biographia Literaria. In Biographia Literaria, he has criticized the theories of Wordsworth and he has also written some amazing critical essays talking about his own theory. So we have really amazing theories given by Coleridge like imagination and fancy, primary and secondary imagination, willing suspension of disbelief. So all these are a part of Biographia Literaria. Apart from that, he has also written essays on Shakespeare. So these essays are collected as lectures on Shakespeare in which he critically analyzes Shakespeare's play and poems. So in this video, I would like to talk about one of the poetical concepts given by Samuel Taylor Coleridge, which is willing suspension of disbelief. Now, I hope you must have read or watched the movie Twilight. And when you watch the movie or read the book, you'll find that the story centers around vampire. We all know that vampires don't exist in real life. But still, we love watching that movie again and again. We love reading that book again and again. Why? Because when we are reading the book, we keep aside our rational thoughts. We keep aside all our logical uh, mind and thoughts connected to it which tells us that such things can never exist in real life. So for the sake of the pleasure of literature, we have to keep aside our rational thoughts and involve ourselves into the fictional world. Only then we will be able to experience the world, we would be experience the writing. This is what Samuel Taylor Coleridge calls as willing suspension of disbelief. When you willingly suspend your disbeliefs. We were kids when we used to watch uh, cartoons and in those cartoons we used to see talking cars and flying monkeys. Now we knew that such things never exist but still for the sake of getting into that world, for the sake of getting pleasure out of watching those things, we used to suspend our disbeliefs. We know that there is nothing like that in real life, but we keep our logical mind on the side and we experience that thing once again. And that is how you take the full experience of a piece of literature. This is what Coleridge calls as willing suspension of disbelief.
So in this short video, I try to give you some important information related to Coldridge's life. I also tried my level best to ignite the fire of romanticism in your heart. My effort was to talk about the concept to give you a glimpse of Coldridge's life and his works. If you like this video, then don't forget to give this video a big fan thumbs up. And also, if you like the kind of videos I put on YouTube, then do subscribe to this channel because I post videos videos every weekend and if you subscribe then you will be the first one to get the notification of my videos you can also follow me on my social media pages i'm running this free go net quiz so whenever you go through your social media pages you'll get the notification of net exam through my pages you can also visit my website and look at the online course that i'm offering if you like that course then do give it a try so that's it for this video lecture we'll meet very soon in the next video lecture till the time we meet next happy learning keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpitakarva.com